Hey, Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ. Bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Gedaliah to my right. Officer Zariah. All praise to the Most High. So today we're going to go over the title. Uh, the title of this lesson, excuse me, is A Cheerful Giver, right? The reason we had to go over things like this is to, as a constant reminder that as our commitment to this truth grows, as we grow, there is a need for finances. I know that's the 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 uh, that that's something black people don't like to talk about. Let's just be honest. We don't like to talk about money. We don't like to talk about finances. But when we was in the Christian church, we was willing to give our all to lies, right? Now we found this truth. We understand that now we have to give alms, not tithes, but alms to better the nation, right? To build up and help us get towards the um, the goal of building the kingdom of God on earth, right? So with that being said, we're going to start off in the book of Acts chapter 20, and we're going to start off at verse 32. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Remember, we're talking about alms and not tithes, right? Tithes were for the Levitical, Levitical priest, all right? Acts chapter 20, verse 32. The book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Go ahead. And now, brethren, I commend you to God, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. Uh huh. I have covered it no man's silver or gold or apparel. So the Apostle Paul is getting ready. To, he's he's actually talking to the leaders of Ephesus. Right. And he's letting them know as he gets ready to depart. Right. That. He has covered in no man's gold or silver or apparel, meaning Paul had a job. Paul worked. Paul had no issue working to sustain himself or to sustain the men that was around him, right? And that's the same mindset we have to have. Our elders work and have worked over the years. They taught us as young men to get jobs. Sisters, you single sisters, or even you sisters that are married who, who your husbands require to work. We have to work, right? We have to, we're in captivity, we subject to payments. So we to, in order to bring in finance, not only for ourselves and for the congregation, we have to work. So Paul is saying the same thing here. Right, go ahead. Yea, you yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. And what? And to them that were with me. So Paul's basically saying the money that he was able to earn from working was not only to take care of himself, but also the brothers and the sisters that were around him. When he traveled, he had men with him. He had Paul, he had Silas with him. Right. He had many other brothers that would go with him, that would roll with him when he would go to these various places. And he's saying, I took care of them. I made sure that they were straight, too. Right. Not only did these hands minister to my own substance, but also to the substance and the needs of the brothers and the sisters that are around me. And that's the mindset we have to have in these last days. Go ahead. I have showed you all things, how that's so laboring. ye ought to support the weak. See that when we labor is to support the weak. Go ahead. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Read. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So it's better to have that charity, right? We, when, as we walk in this truth, we got to understand something. That we must have charity towards the nation, right? When the leadership goes to these other countries and we help them by going through the booster club and going through these various channels to try to make sure that we have the funds, you got to understand something. I've been there. I've experienced it. These funds are used to help our brothers and sisters in these countries, right? In these places where um, they don't have anything, right? They don't have running water. They don't have a house, right? They don't have an apartment. They don't have the things or the luxuries that we've had and that we've grown accustomed to here in America. So now the Lord is telling us it's better for us to give than to receive, right? Go from there. Go to the 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And let's read verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5. So a cheerful giver, Right? In these last days, we understand that our brothers and sisters need help, and it's up to us to come together to help them, right? Go ahead, read that. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 5. Come on. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, mm -hmm. whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of, matter of bounty not of covetousness. So it's a matter of bounty and not of covetousness, right? When we get these funds or when these funds come into the school, it's to help the building. It's to help with the curtains. It's to help with the leadership table. It's to help with the AC. It's to help with the heat. 
Help with the lights. Help with the food. Providing things for the congregation that need be. We need a kids area for the, our young men and our young women to be able to go and learn because they're not able to learn on the level that we're able to learn on as adults. Right? We need security. We need all these different things to be put in place to make a nation. Right? The problem is when you're small-minded and when you're not thinking on the level of a nation building, you become um, irritated when finances come up. You become agitated when someone tells you, hey, do you give alms? Or, hey, are you able to help the body? Because you're not spiritually inclined on what we're trying to do here. You're still thinking carnal. Right? Keep reading. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. You hear that? He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Meaning what? If you only put a little in. And I'm not talking about a little because you only have a little. That's different. But if you only, you're not willing to help, you're not willing to help provide certain things for the body, for the congregation to help us build, it said that you will reap sparingly, right? This, you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. Go ahead. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. And those that say, I'm willing to help, I'm willing to give my finances, I'm willing to give my time and my effort to help build up the congregation, to help take us to another level and growth, it said they will reap bountifully, meaning the Lord will uh, send a recompense. They'll receive that back. Go ahead. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. Everybody's not cheerful. Everybody doesn't have charity. Everybody's not a giver, right? But those that are, and you purpose that in your heart, go ahead. So let him give. Give according to that. Read. Not grudgingly. Not grudgingly. Not giving like, oh, I really don't want to give this. Read. Or of necessity. Read. For God loveth. A cheerful giver. So don't do it because you feel like, oh, I just got to give this. Do it because you want to do it. Do it because you want to help the nation grow. Right? That's what the scripture is saying. He said, for God loveth a cheerful giver. We have to have a lot of faith in this truth in these last days. Because in Christianity, we were destroyed through tithes. Right? The, the pastors poor Malachi chapter 3, will a man rob God? And it poisoned many of our mindset when it came to giving money to the church. That's why some of us hold back our hand now and don't want to give. But understand something. If you truly believe the scriptures and you truly believe that what you're doing is to help benefit the nation and not to line the pockets of the leadership, which it isn't, I can tell you that for a fact, then you're going to be ready to give. You're going to be ready to have that type of uh, spirit, right? And the Most High will make sure that you and your family have what you need when that time comes. Now, give me some rock chapter 12, and I want you to start at verse 1. Sirach chapter 12. Let's read verse 1. This is the book of Sirach chapter 12 and verse 1. Come on. When thou wilt do good, know to who thou doest it. Read. So shalt thou be thanked for thy benefit. That's why you see our bishop do shout out Tuesday every week, thanking the brothers and sisters for the help, thanking the brothers and sisters for their donation and their letters and answering their, and, and, and answering their questions and praying for them when they need prayer, right? That's why, because the scripture says, when thou doest good, know to whom thou doest good to. You haven't seen us ever use funds to put in our own pocket. You, we just had the biggest Passover that we've had, right? We are growing in congregations. I mean, congregations sprouting up everywhere. How do you think that's being done? How do you think those brothers and sisters are being visited? Right. How do you think they're, they, they have the technology that they have in these certain areas? It's not all because they're able to do it themselves. They need help. And that's where leadership comes in. That's where funds and arms comes in to help these different congregations. Go ahead. Do good to the godly man and thou shalt find a recompense. Uh huh. And if not from him, yet from the most high. So when you help the godly. The godly man, the godly woman, the Bible says God says you will receive a recompense. And if he can't do it. Then from the Lord, then the Lord will recompense you or repay you or reimburse you for helping your brothers and your sisters because you believe. Go ahead. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. Go ahead. Nor to him that giveth no alms. If you give no alms, there can no good. Sometimes we wonder, why can't anything good? Well, then we look back at, at our alms for the last year and we haven't given anything. The God, the most high God has blessed us to bring in all these funds, all these alms, and yet we have not given at all. And then we wonder why. It's because the scripture says there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. Go from there. Go to the book of uh, Luke, chapter 8, verse 2. The book of Luke, chapter 8, and verse 2. Let's look at some examples. This is the book of Luke, chapter 8, and verse 2. Go ahead. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits mm -hmm. and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, 
out of whom went seven devils. Go ahead. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Did what they do? Ministered unto him of their substance. These sisters ministered unto him of their substance, right? These sisters were making money, right? They were doing whatever they did uh, business-wise, and they were giving to the ministry of Christ because they believed. Because when you believe, because you know what? Give me James chapter 2. Because a lot of times we say, oh, I got faith. I believe. I believe in this ministry. I believe in this movement. But you're not willing to put your funds in, right? And like I said, this is not Christianity. These funds are not going to the pastor's pocket. These funds are going to make sure that we build up the nation of Israel and the necessities of our people, right? James chapter 2. Let's read verse 17. The book of James chapter 2 and verse 17. Even so faith, if it hath not works... Is dead being alone. You hear that? Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. You can't just say I have faith, but you don't have the works behind it. If you have faith that what we're doing is right, that we're going out here and ministering to our brothers and sisters scattered abroad and going out here to the streets and teaching our people and doing radio shows, right, and flying all over the world to teach and to graze up the 12 tribes, if you believe that that's right, and that's the truth, and you have faith that it's going to bring forth and usher in the second coming of Christ, then you need to put your, your works behind that. Right? Go ahead. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, uh -huh. and I will show thee my faith by my works. James said, I'm going to not only... Do my. I'm not only going to say I have faith. I'm going to show you the works behind my faith. Go to the book of Luke chapter 19, right? Luke chapter 19, and let's read verse, uh, give me a second. It just popped in my head. Luke chapter 19, let's read verse um, 1. The book of Luke chapter 19 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. So Zacchaeus was a rich man. He was chief of the publicans. The publicans were the tax collectors, right? They robbed a lot of people. That's why a lot of our people didn't like the publicans, because they were robbing them. They weren't only taking what was required of by the government. They would take a little extra to line their pockets. Hmm, sound like your pastor today. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So he was convicted by believing on Christ. He was convicted by the evil that he had done. He wanted salvation. He was a rich man. So he said, you know what? If I've taken anything from anyone falsely, I restore fourfold and I give half of my substance to the poor. This is the same for us today, brothers and sisters. The Most High has blessed many of us and put many of us in positions to where we can not only sustain ourselves and our families, but we can also help the congregation. This is the mindset, the mindset of repentance that uh, Zacchaeus had. We now have to have that same mindset because remember, the Lord saved us as well. He brought us out of the fire. He brought us out of the wickedness. We was convicted by the word of God, and now he has set us up financially to not only help ourselves but help others. We have to do the same, right? Give me Tobit 1 and 3. Tobit chapter 1, verse 3. This is the book of Tobit, chapter 1 and verse 3. Come on. I, Tobit, have walked all the days of my life in the way of truth mm -hmm. and justice, and I did many alms deeds to my brethren and my nation who came with me to Nineveh into the land of the Assyrians. The reason I wanted to highlight Tobit is because when Tobit and his forefathers and his brothers came into Nineveh, remember, they were under captivity. They were under the Assyrian captivity. Our people, not all of our people were able to have the proper finances in captivity just like today. But Tobit, being put in a position of authority, being put in a position where the Lord blessed him, did many alms deeds to his brethren. Meaning he didn't look on the, the lower state of his people and say, oh, I can't help you or I'm not willing to help you. Tobit was willing to help. Here's the proof. Go to chapter 4. Start at verse 7. Let's see the instructions he gave to his son. Tobit 4 and 7. Tobit chapter 4 and verse 7. Give alms of thy substance, and when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious. That sound earlier where Paul said not to give grudgingly. Same thing. Go ahead. 
Neither turn thy face from any poor. Uh -huh. And the face of God shall not be turned away from thee. That, we're reading that throughout the scriptures. Where if you give to the godly man, you will receive a recompense. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Go ahead. If thou hast abundance, give alms accordingly. If you got abundance, if the Lord blessed you to make $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 a month, I don't know. Some of you may be making that. I don't know. Then give accordingly. Give according to your abundance or what you're comfortable giving. Right? Go ahead. If thou have but a little. But if you have but a little. Be not afraid to give according to you that, that little. But if you have but a little, don't be afraid to give according to little. I always tell the example. I remember when I used to be over the arms here in this in, in Mississippi, right? I remember a brother would give a dollar and thirty-eight cents, a dollar and twenty-seven cents, two dollars and seventy-one cents. He put it in the envelope, it'd be pennies in there, coins in there. I had no problem counting that. Because I saw this brother got faith. This is literally all he has to give. And he gave it. The most I gonna bless brothers and sisters like that. Go ahead. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. Go ahead. Because that alms doth deliver from death. Alms doth deliver from death, read. And suffereth not to come into darkness. Go ahead. For alms is a good gift unto all that give it. In the sight of the Most High. The Most High said alms is a good gift in the sight of those that give it. And um, Excuse me. It's a, the, for alms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the Most High. I mean, the Most High sees those things. And he blesses those things. This is how we know. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 25. And I got one more scripture after this. We're going to shut it down. Psalms, chapter 37, verse 25. The book of Psalms, chapter 37, and verse 25. Go ahead. I have been young. And now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The righteous are those that are willing to give their substance to help the body, to help the brothers and sisters that are in need. Go ahead. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. You hear that? He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. I mean, his children after him. They're going to be fine. Why? Because not only did he give alms, he taught his children to give alms. Teach your children to do the same. When they get allowance or when they work, have them put, put a portion of that towards the alms. The Most High blesses that. He sees that. Right? We're not promising you a hundredfold like the Christian church. But what we can show you, tell you is that according to the scriptures, the Most High gives a recompense to those that cheerfully give. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 Let's read verse 18 and 19. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, and verse 18. Go ahead. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. Mm. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. So by much slothfulness, the building decayeth. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. Go ahead. A feast is made for laughter. Go ahead. And wine maketh merry. Go ahead. But money answereth all things. But money answer with all things and in order to keep this congregation going in order to keep the nation going and building it takes money brothers and sisters all right so with that 15 minutes with the captains i'm captain get to my right officers arrive and with that we say shalom most high in christ bless we used to scream black power while heron was pushed but at the end of the day nothing's in vain iuic has been given a vision the tents of judah has risen many has attempted the mission minor murmuring omitting and missing the mark just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark we on paul's mission we out on the road purple and gold from mexico cuba haiti ghana sierra leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth